So this is the fourth part of the solid characterization process. You're not always going to do this, but when you have to find out if something's flammable or reactive or explosive, this is the, the next step. Of course, you are going to be wearing PPE. You'll notice I'm wearing glasses and gloves. That's the minimum. Uh, you might be wearing a lot more. I know what these compounds are, so this is what I'm doing. You're also doing these tests far away from the leaking container at a table in a safe part of the hot zone, as we've discussed earlier. The first part of this test is the hot wire test. To do this, you're going to take a very small part of your sample, about half the size of a pea, and put it into a dish. I'm going to do that twice, just so we have two different compounds to look at. That's charcoal. This is ammonium nitrate. I'm going to heat up copper wire, thick copper wire, until it's red hot. I'm going to keep it right in the flame here until it gets red hot. The idea here is to check whether this is reactive with heat, but not actual flame. And it takes a little bit of judgment here for you to figure out how much reactivity is bad reactivity. Okay, I'm looking at it, it's bright red hot. I'm going to touch it to my black sample here. Nothing. No reaction at all. Okay. So that means we can continue with the test. If it had popped or um, exploded, then we wouldn't have continued. With the ammonium nitrate, I'm getting a little bit of steam coming off because there's some residual moisture in there, but it didn't actually go pop. It didn't actually explode or react. That means I'm good to proceed to the hot tube test. Now, always do the oxidizer tests and the hot wire test first. And you also don't want to be pointing the, uh, any of this stuff, any of these tubes at somebody uh, when you're doing it, because if it does pop out, you could have a flaming hot or burning piece of hazardous material go flying all over your friend or your buddy. The hot tube test is another way to test for an oxidizer. We're going to take a little bit of the sample, say half a pea, and add it to the tube, to a test tube. It's right at the bottom there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a matchstick or any piece of wood, a tongue depressor, and we're going to rip off the head and we're going to put the actual wood of the matchstick into the test tube. Why are we doing this? Well, the wood from a matchstick is fuel. If we're just heating this in the absence of oxygen, which it'll be, there won't be any oxygen in here, and we see flame, then that means that the chemical that we've added before, that quarter pea, that half pea size amount of chemical, is actually providing the oxygen and allowing it to burn. So we're not actually trying to light the material on fire yet, we just want to see if it, uh, if together with wood, if we can create a fire. So we get the flame going again, and we're going to gently heat the entire tube, starting at the top, not holding it in our hands. And we're going to heat the bottom of it until the bottom, the, uh, the wood at the bottom turns to ash. I can see it turning black. Now, the smoke or the gases that are being driven off here means there's no oxygen here. The oxygen is being driven off. But I'm seeing flame inside there. I'm seeing little jets of flame. As the oxidizer that we added, in this case ammonium nitrate, helped the wood burn. So it's a good indication that we are dealing with an oxidizer. So the theory here, once again, because it, it took me a while to get this, is that we've got the matchsticks in there. As we heat the matchsticks, they pyrolyze, they release gases. This gas and the smoke dries out the oxygen. At that point, there's no oxygen left except possibly for the chemical that you've added. We did this with the other chemical here, this bit of charcoal, that would be charcoal and wood. We'd get smoke coming out the top, but we wouldn't see that flame, 
that's inside the test tube. Therefore, charcoal is not an oxidizer. The next test is a flame test. This is where we try and burn the substance itself, or rather, burn the vapors coming off of it. Now, always do your peroxide test and your oxidizer tests and your hot wire test and your hot tube test before you do this test because you don't want to be doing this in an explosive and you don't want to be pointing this tube at yourself. It's going to shoot out and hit you in the eye. Point it toward your friend. Now, we're going to take a small amount of sample again, about half, half a pea, and add it to the tube. We're going to heat it up, starting at the top, coming down to the bottom. You don't want to hold it too close because you will melt the tube. And you're going to wait until it starts evolving smoke. Once it starts evolving smoke or vapors, you're going to try and light those vapors on fire. You want to see what color the smoke is. You want to see uh, what color the flame is, whether it's the, uh, the material catches on fire, whether it melts, whether it boils, whether it evaporates, all that stuff is excellent information for you to have. Once you do get smoke coming off of it, you can test it with a pH strip or an oxidizer strip just to see if you're getting a hit on those, uh, on those tests. So once again, we have a flame and I'm starting to heat the test tube, not right here because that will eventually melt the test tube. Once it's warmed up, I'm going to start heating the sample at the bottom. Once it gets hot enough to start releasing vapors, I'm going to see about igniting the vapors at the top. which will happen any minute now. So let's burn some stuff to find out how the flame test works. First, we'll take something that we know burns. Matchsticks burn. Matchsticks burn, clearly. I'm just going to take the wooden portions of some matchsticks, no heads on them, put them in the bottom of the test tube. Let's find out if wood burns. But we can't just light it, because that's sometimes hard to do. I'm wearing my glasses, I've got my gloves, I'm not breathing the fumes, the fumes might be poisonous. And I get the fire going. I start at the top and I start heating the tube, working my way to the bottom. Now I don't hold it too tight. You see the smoke? So I make a note. Gray smoke is coming out. Let's get a bit more smoke here. Periodically, I'm trying to light the smoke on fire. I thought I saw a little, little bit of flame in that smoke. Because, of course, it's not the wood that burned is the gases that are being driven off. Now we've got a lot of gas coming off. Yep. And I can see that the, the vapors coming off from this solid object that I'm heating are indeed flammable. There you go. Flame. Yay. So we've established that wood is in fact flammable. Now, it doesn't always work this way. If you take charcoal briquettes, you really have to heat them up super hot to get this amount of smoke or vapor coming off of it that you can then try lighting on fire. And the problem with that is you usually melt the test tube. Then again, the danger of a truckload of charcoal briquettes 
catching on fire when they flip over on the highway because somebody lights up a cigarette is fairly low. Let's find out if other stuff is flammable. Let's take some shoe polish. Just regular dried up shoe polish. One could be, is it a paste? Is it a liquid? Well, in this case, it's a solid. Let's see what happens to it. Again, as we're heating it up, we're going to make note of what happens to the, uh, to the material. Trying to heat it evenly. To me, it looks like it's melting. It's melting and it's evolving a gray vapor here. All right, so that's two important pieces of information. It's melting and a gray smoke is coming off of it. Let's see if the smoke is flammable. Can you see the flame there? I can see just a little flame coming off <laughs> and it's continuing to go. Who would have thunk it? Shoe polish is in fact flammable and the more I heat it, the bigger the flame gets. So that concludes the flame test for, uh, for unknown solids. A very important thing, be careful, only do this if you've been trained, wear your glasses, do this away from the main area, not by the whole big shoe polish truck that you can light on fire and, uh, and create a great big problem. If this burns really energetically and it starts popping or exploding, stop everything. You might have an explosive, back off, call the bomb squad, call in the big guns. This is now beyond your ability to handle. Just to be clear, the burn tests, you don't have wood in there because you're seeing if the material itself will burn. With the hot tube test, you do have wood in there because you're providing a fuel in case it's an oxidizer. With the, the burn test, you will just have the material by itself in there and you're heating it up and then trying to burn the vapors that are coming off that solid material when you heat it. So let's try the same test with ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate, there have been many, many explosions involving ammonium nitrate. So let's see what happens when we heat it up. Did you see that smoke ring come out? That's not a good sign. It doesn't catch on fire, but it did go poof. It doesn't burn on its own. That color change is just the flame hitting the edge of the test tube. But the poof and the smoke ring that came out on a large scale, that would be a bad thing. That's a big hint that you're dealing with something that might be uh, might not be the world's most stable compound.